Hi everybody, welcome to the Paranormal Connection. I'm your host, Don Wilberg. Well, tonight we have a two-for day. We've got two returning guests for a two-part series. They're doing something wonderful. It's called Hannah Somatics, and I would like to introduce them to you right now. Susan Koenig and Janet Hoagland, amazing practitioners. Thank you for coming, and welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so great to be here. Thank well, you. before, you know, let's, let's start out by talking about the mechanics of Hannah Somatics okay. for those who have never experienced or heard of it. So, Susan, why don't you start? Well, Hannah Somatics is just, it's so wonderful. I'm so glad to share it. It's a teaching modality, and you learn how to release chronically contracted muscles and then use those chronically contracted muscles in movement patterns so you release pain, your joints aren't stiff anymore, you're moving with ease and even grace, and you just feel so much better and so much younger. Wow. Well, how do people get into these uh, positions where they have these chronic, uh, you know, round and round we go right. with the inflammation and, and, you know, feeling like there's, there's no cure, there's no recourse for this? Well, there are different avenues. Of course, mm -hmm. people can have injuries and various traumas. And that can skew your body into different distortions, and then you don't really come out of them. But let's take the biggest example today, and that's the computer posture mm. with the rounded shoulders and the sunken chest and the forward head. And that's what you most notice, and pretty soon your shoulders are burning and you're overstressing your eyes, and you think when you get up from the chair, you're just going to have normal posture, but actually, that doesn't happen, especially if you've been spending hours and hours and hours a day, day after day in this rounded posture. Your spine is rounded. The front of your body is shortened. Even your hip flexors, where your thigh meets your mm -hmm. lower abdominal area, that's been in flexion for a long, long time. And when you go to stand up, you're not quite standing up straight because you can't because you have now developed chronic muscular contraction, contractions that are sort of locking you into this posture. And that affects everything. It even affects the physiology. So if you're scrunched like this and you try to take a deep breath, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so breath is so important, not only to lung function, but to heart function. You start breathing up high into your chest instead of a full belly breath, and now you start getting large squirts of cortisol, the stre stress hormone comes wow. into your body because you're, you're, you're up here, and that's a posture that is very stressful. So there's all kinds of ramifications for um, developing postures and movements that are distorted. Wow. And so anisomatic education gets you out of that. Janet, why don't you tell the audience uh, about some of the movements? How many movements are there? Well, in the uh, basic cat stretches, mm -hmm. there's 12. Okay. And so they can be done over, oh gosh, anywhere from 20 minutes, 20 minutes, I think. Some 15. people do them in 10, mm -hmm. but you can take an hour mm -hmm. if you go slowly, yeah. add a few others. Let's talk about the brain function, because this is the fascinating part yeah. to me. The, uh, what you call it amnesia. The sensory motor amnesia. sensory amnesia. motor amnesia. Right. Why, don't you, why don't you explain that Good. In, to people? That's, that's the heart of this, really. Mm -hmm. So when you have a chronic muscular contraction, what's happening is you start altering how you do things. So you start to put on clothes. Well, this arm doesn't work so well because it hurts. So you stop using certain muscles. And when you stop using certain muscles, you're not sending the sensory feedback into the cortex of the brain, the learning part of the brain, and it's not sending signals to the motor part. And now you start not only not using it, but you don't even realize you're not using it. Yeah. And now you go to do something with your arm and it's very stiff. So one of the things about um, doing this work is m most of our functioning, most of our movement is stuff we've done all the time, and it's called subcortical, it's unconscious movement. We don't think when we talk, when we eat, when we get out of bed, when we get up from a chair, yeah, when we sit down absolutely. in a chair, and that's very efficient, we mm -hmm. need that. 
but we start doing those things with chronic muscular contraction. And now we start having pain and stiffness. So in order to learn your way out of that, you need to go up into the cortical conscious part of the brain. And that's the part that, of the brain that can learn how to undo old patterns that are no longer efficient or competent and learn new patterns. And so you really have to get into the motor cortex. And the way we do that, it's, it's, it almost sounds so simple that it sounds like it couldn't possibly be true. But what we do is for a period of time, you are gonna slow way down and you're gonna intentionally move your muscles into a shortened, contracted state, pain-free as possible. Mm -hmm. But then the real key is to slowly release out of that muscular contraction just to relaxation. And now you're doing it paying attention to your experience. What are the sensations of the movement? And this slowness and awareness and paying attention to the sensations of the movement puts you in your motor cortex. Mm -hmm. And it's your motor cortex that can then actually, it's called reset the resting tonus of the muscles. It, it can actually reduce the level of contraction in your muscles so that now when you go back to your everyday activities that you're doing at normal speed, you're doing it with a refreshed musculoskeletal body, musculoskeletal system, and now you can move your arms and move your legs and reach and grasp and bend over and stand up, sit down, and you've released that excess chronic muscular contraction which causes this forgetting, this sensory motor amnesia about how to appropriately move your body. Which is, you know, when you look at the elderly, a lot of that, the mechanics are because you know, we're, we're not doing the uh, normal routines that we did when we were in our 30s and yeah. 40s, you know, for or long. Or when you were much younger. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, I, yeah. I, I want to jump in on that yeah. one because actually once when you're doing the Hannah somatics and, and you're a prime example. I'm 70 so you, now. So are you, Janet, <laughs> that you can, you can go back. Yeah. You can retrain your body how yes. to... Mm -hmm to react and have the same motor right. skills that you did when you were a kid. You can have the same or almost the same. You can get, you can improve greatly. Yes. That's the point. And most pain and dysfunction in the body, most of that is what we call functional. It's not structural. It's not a disease. Mm -hmm. It's that you've lost function because of the way you've been using your body or not been using your body. And once you learn how to do these simple movements slowly with awareness, you start regaining that function mm -hmm. and you have this system-wide blossoming and you start walking with more freedom and you're not scared to go out, you're not scared to go traveling again, you're not afraid to walk up and down stairs because you feel that you have more control in the sense of freedom to go somewhere mm -hmm. because your body is working for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is it's yeah. an incredible feeling. Right. Um, Janet, I, I, we're doing two parts, so I, I'm right. trying to get in as much yeah. as I can, yeah. but I do want to address that you became a practitioner because... Of trauma. Of trauma. Having trauma myself. Yes. And so it was major you, trauma. Let's talk about that. Yeah, and... Um, Thank you, because that's my, that's that's what brought me to Hannah Somatics. I heard overheard a conversation to normal people. It didn't make sense intuitively, even though it didn't make sense to me. There were certain things they were talking about related to the brain and the nervous system. Mm -hmm. I thought I, that's it. That's the missing piece, because I found working out of my way. I, I mean, out of trauma back to healing, which the doctor's prognosis for healing was five years of freedom. I mean, after five years, I'd be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And I wanted my body back, so I tried many things. Yeah. Well, let's, I knew let's, there was a piece. You missing. were in a, a, just a horrendous car accident. Yes. Let's, yeah. you know, let right. everybody know yes. that, you know, that's what happened to you yeah. and how many people do bounce back from right, something so right. horrific. Right, so, I went through the windshield twice. Okay. Which had severe impact 
not only on my body but my head. Right. And so getting my brain back was a mm -hmm. whole another thing too because I always felt there was a hesitation left in in the way I would think, the way I'd process, the way I'd even write. Mm -hmm. And Susan can attest to that. Yeah, so you most likely mm -hmm. had internal brain injury. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so at that time, there was nothing that they saw as a solution. Mm -hmm. um, I heard these guys talking 20 years later, and I'd done a lot of things, keep in mind that I never did stop. But listening to them talk, I sensed something in there. I've got to go search out what they're doing. Found out it was Hannah Somatics and signed up for it in, in one day, which was a full day class. Mm -hmm. And that's all I needed was to know that this is one more piece to furthering my healing 20 years later. Mm. But it tur turned out that here it is, I'm 20 years later, and in the process of trauma as it works itself out, there was another issue going on in my body that hadn't. And it hadn't surfaced at that time, but it surfaced later as it happens, as time progresses mm -hmm. in our maturing bodies. And I just, in fact, last year went through that stage and was told that the biggest challenge to my surgery that I had in June was going to be addressing the walking gait that had been there for so many years. And you mentioned older people and looking, watching how they're moving and mm -hmm. looking how they, how they hold themselves. Actually, to me, anybody who comes out of trauma, unless they can get to somebody who's excep exceptional, and I'm talking about maturing years, mm -hmm. that they can get back everything that they lost and even better, because now they're not walking around with the trauma. Right. Mine was a, a very, very pronounced walking gait due to an imbalance in my hip. And it was pain that I had 24-7. Mm -hmm. So I had to walk with accessories. And that's what they, they kept shaking their heads like, we don't know, I would have <laughs> never seen this, but go for it. And I did between a very excellent PT and working with the Hannah Somatics, of which every single day, I didn't miss one day. So here I am walking without accessories, and I'm walking straighter than I did before in a, in a natural posture. And pain? Gone. That's totally amazing. gone. Yeah. Totally gone. That's so it's, it truly is a brain nervous system tool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to jump in there uh, with my own experience because you actually uh, before you came on the show last time said before I come on and talk about this I want to work with you mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I had had a car accident myself and was mm -hmm. going through a lot I'd mm -hmm. been on I can't tell you how many painkillers I can't tell you how many treatments I had I was in chronic constant pain yeah, and and she and she didn't yes she didn't uh, tell you, me any of that you yeah. you live with it yeah. you just learn mm -hmm. to live with it right. what else are you going to do mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. I had what three sessions with you I think it was two two I felt like I got my life back. Mm -hmm. I hadn't been able to sleep on my side in 10 years. Mm -hmm. I had not been able to turn my head all the way in 10 years. There's so many things at two sessions. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I tell you, doctors, they gave up on me. Right. You know, mm -hmm. They kept right. throwing medication right. at me. Right. So I'm a firm believer in this. This mm -hmm. is the, the most amazing, uh, uninvasive yes. procedures that you can do for yourself right. in the privacy right. of your own home with beautiful people like you. Oh. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, so let's talk about the educational process uh, because I did say it's easy and I did say, you know, you're going to see results right away. Uh, walk us through, you know, a, a simple okay. uh, procedure. Well, let's say somebody comes in and they have a lot of chronic neck and shoulder pain. It's the computer posture. Let's mm. take that one. Uh, because the brain organizes us as a whole, you can't just work in one area. You need to address enough of the full body pattern. So we very systematically, we may or may not start in the, in the neck, but we will have you very gently, if, you're, if, if this is your posture in your head and neck, we will have you gently go into that same pattern 
because that's the pattern of your contracted muscles. And then we'll have you slowly come out of it to the best of your ability. And you'll go back in and slowly come out a few times. Your rounded shoulders, again, we go with the posture because that is the way you're already contracted. Mm -hmm. You add a little bit more contract contraction, pain-free. It, it alerts the motor cortex where you are focused and you slowly come out of that contraction and you are being aware of what you're doing. You might be cued by your practitioner, but you are also um, learning to internally sense yourself. Mm -hmm. And you go back and you do that a few times. Then you need to address the shortening in the abdominal chain of that reaction. So you'll contract your belly and you'll slowly come out of that. And you'll do that a few times. And then maybe you'll flex your hip a little bit and slowly come out of that. And over the course of a session, a couple of sessions, you go back through your pattern and you work the, the different parts of your pattern and then we put it all together with some homework exercises. Mm -hmm. Some of them are more local and some of them might be full body where you can come into the whole pattern and then you can come out of it slowly and you are retraining that brain muscle connection so now your head is in a more appropriate position, your shoulders are more back, your chest is more open, your belly is longer, you can take a breath. When you stand up, your spine can actually lengthen, your hips come unflexed and you can actually bring your legs under your torso. And so that's basically how we approach it. We, we look at your pattern and we do our best to pinpoint the different parts and then put it together in some full body patterns. Wow. What kind of results have you been getting for uh, people that have thought they needed knee surgery, back surgery? What, what kind of findings are you, are you It's all getting? over the place. I mean, if you, some, people, some people are diagnosed with needing knee surgery. And sometimes that's true. They don't have any cartilage left, for example. Mm -hmm. But many times it's, that's you, we, well, here's what we say. Try it out. Is it worth two or three sessions mm -hmm. to try it out? And if it starts working for you, you might not need that knee surgery. Maybe it was tight muscles that were contracting and compressing into the joint. And as those muscles become free, so does your knee. So it's, it's worth a try. Mm. And um, so many, many, many people, I don't have exact statistics, but it's a combination of your actual, the actual physical health of the joint, your general motivation, uh, what is really the problem? Is it really contracted muscles and not some kind of structural problem in mm -hmm. the knee? If it's a functional problem, meaning if it's tight muscles that are causing that pain, this is the answer. If yeah. you've got something structural going on, you may need an intervention that may require some surgery, but you also need the somatics mm -hmm. because you've, that injury has engendered contracted muscles. So mm -hmm. even before the surgery and after the surgery, you want to do your somatic work so that mm -hmm. you are leaving those muscles in the most yeah. balanced way around that joint that you can. Now, Janet, you did that before you had your I surgery did. and after. Talk about that experience. Well, when I went into the PT the first time, mm -hmm. and mind you, I'd been doing, even with the pain 24-7, if I wasn't able to accomplish the move that day, because pain moves around, mm -hmm. and some days more intense than others, but I was determined to do the work every single day. If I couldn't do it physically, I did it mentally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I had two months of of working with the PT. And when I went in to meet him the first time, he was convinced he had received the wrong wrong file, ah. the wrong case name. Yeah. And the reason for that is because my joints, my hip, my knee, everything was so flexible. He could move me around as if I'd done yoga for, for 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. And when I told him that I hadn't, but I'd been doing something else, he was 
very curious because he said, my God, this is incredible and I'm sure you're in the wrong office. Mm -hmm. And he actually checked and found out that, nope, I'm the one. <laughs> so we had a lot of sharing to do as I worked with him because he was very, very good. Mm -hmm. And the doctor I had was very good. And so what occurred from that is I was given another set of times with him following the surgery and my healing was so fast mm -hmm. as far as the flexibility that I, whatever I had lost, it was only because I hadn't used it and it was addressing the walking gait, mm -hmm. which didn't disappear overnight, that took work. Yeah. That's why they had said that that's gonna be the biggest challenge, far more than surgery. Surgeries now for hips and other, other joints are relatively easy. Mm -hmm and easy in the sense that the healing time is fast and people are up and moving around and talk to them two weeks later and they're just doing great. However, there's still a trauma from the surgery that is the residue in the body. Mm -hmm. And maybe they got up, because I know I did after, after being freed of pain, and I thought I could go home and go to work tomorrow. But it's there, it's yeah. there when you get home and you start to f slow down and the shock's wearing off from the surgery and it's, it, then it becomes real that, no, you got some work to do. Yeah. So. Well, I'm so happy that we're doing a two-part series because we have so much more to talk <laughs> about and we're almost out of time. Ah. But I do want you to give your information so people mm -hmm. know how to contact you and, okay. and you know, look into Hannah Smattis. Okay. Well, first of all, my email, and anybody is welcome to email me. I'm going to spell it out. It's first my name, S-U-S-A-N-K-O-E-N-I-G at earthlink.net. And then I'm also on YouTube. You can just put in my name, S-U-S-A-N-K-O-E-N-I-G. And uh, my business name is Somatics for You, but you don't even need that. Just put in my name and my YouTube channel will come out. I think I have about 25, I don't remember exactly how many little short YouTubes I have with the different exercises. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also on SoundCloud. I audio record many of my classes and you can get some of them for free on my SoundCloud channel. Again, you just put in my name, S-U-S-A-N. K-O-E-N-I-G. Great. And how about you, Janet? How can people contact you? Uh, I have an email. J-A-N-E-T-H-O-A-G-L-A-N-D at surewest.net. I am here in Sacramento, local, and I'm also uh, in teaching at the Learning Exchange, and that'll be in the October month. Great. So we'll look for you in the uh, Learning Exchange paper. Mm -hmm. That'll be listed. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, it goes out covering two months. And so yeah. that's a sep September, October edition. OK. Uh, so people can actually email you, and, and you'll send them the information. Right. And we'll have uh, information on the show up on, okay. on the blog and, and, and everything, too. And they should email me if they're interested in becoming a practitioner or just knowing more where more resources are, email me. Great. I love it. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's give some information about The Paranormal Connection, shall we? The Paranormal Connection airs the first and third Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Our companion show, Story Connection, airs the second and fourth Thursdays of each month. Each episode repeats the following Friday at 1.30 p.m. and Saturday at 5.30 a.m. Watch these programs online at the same airtimes by going to accesssacramento.org and clicking Watch 17. In the Sacramento region, you can see us on Comcast Channel 17 and on AT&T Channel 99. You can find previously aired shows on the Paranormal Connection YouTube channel. For information on upcoming shows and previous Paranormal Connection guests, go to paranormalconnectiontv.blogspot.com. You can contact us at paranormalconnectiontv at gmail.com. And don't forget, find us on Facebook. Become a friend and become a fan. Shall we? Well, we we got a couple minutes left, and but we will launch into part two. Uh, so, 
Any parting words? There's hope. You can feel so much better and start to move in your body so much more freely with Hannah Somatic Education. Great. How about you, Janet? Well, for me, it's, it's something for everybody, in particular anybody that's had some trauma from surgery. It's something that it's worth the risk of the time because all you're going to lose, if you lose anything, is a belief you have that's currently limiting you. Oh, that's beautifully stated. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we're going to see you in part two. Okay. All right, we've mm -hmm. got more to talk about. And uh, to everybody listening to this program, I hope that you will look these ladies up and um, there's so much valuable information. This stuff is work working. It's just a beautiful, beautiful modality that uh, is so pain, painless and uh, uninvasive. So I hope you check it out. Thank you to my fabulous crew for helping us put the show on the air uh, for you. Uh, Greg and Lisa and Ted and Laura and Rick, thank you. Without this, we couldn't do it. And um, with that, we're going to say tune in for part two and good night. Thank you.